Altering prophetic fellowship with Prophet Elvis Mbonye, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Sharon Tomchisha Senyonga. And I'm Simon Senyonga. Now, so mighty to grow the word that people in different nations like Kenya, Rwanda, South Africa, Malawi, Zimbabwe, and so many other countries started to watch the Zoe Online Fellowship with Prophet Elvis Mbonye, waiting for the reward. You are overcomers this year, ladies and gentlemen, and I would love to welcome our audience on Zoom. We love you so much. Prophet Elvis Mbonye loves you, and thank you so much for tuning in. It's always my distinct pleasure and honor to welcome the society icons and the politicians. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. And I know that you know that your life can never remain the same. Tonight we are only expecting the reward of the prophet because we are receiving him for exactly who he is. And because you also know that the Bible says in the book of Psalms 103 verses 2 that praise the Lord all my soul and forget not the benefits of the Lord. So you know that you're rejoicing, magnifying the Lord because there's a fresh grace being poured unto you fresh revelation and your sight is becoming clearer and clearer to focus on the reward of the Lord so magnify him for you have that reward glory to Jesus The time to run. 
praying on earth to set the captives free. We lift our voice, we lift our voice and high. Exclaim your name, O oh God. Great things you have done. Declare with us, come on. Lord, this is the day you have made, and I'll be glad in it. Of healing, of miracles, signs, wonders, as we 
your presence, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. In this time of refreshing, oh Indeed, we're in times of refreshing, ladies and gentlemen. As you're tuned in, just keep being expectant because Prophet Elvis Monia will be stepping in any time from now and he's coming to give us a new thing. He's coming to do a new thing in our lives. Now, I don't know what has shaped your experience or what experience you've had that has shaped your future, actually, or what you've gone through. But one thing that I know is that today, Prophet Elvis Monia will be standing in this place and once he starts to prophesy, you will realize that you have been opened up to the power of the yet to come of Zion and boom, the future will no longer be a mystery. And because the, the future can no longer be a mystery that points to one thing, that prophecy is the light that you use. The scripture says in the book of John 1 verses 5 that the light shines and darkness cannot overcome it. Now what you use to overcome is actually light and prophecy is that insight that you use. So tonight as you watch this particular prophecy take a hold of it, take the power and the might that it carries because it's the weapon that you use as your light to overcome darkness. So prophecy now more than ever for you means that actually you're overcoming because your future is no longer a mystery by Prophet Elvis Mbonye. Democratic Republic of Congo there is going to be true change. The Democratic Republic of Congo has finally elected a new president. Your Felix Tshisekedi has surprisingly won the race. I had another prophetic experience still in the UK. Major banks had been hacked. They even started hacking into credit card systems. Massive hack attack involving 100 million customers. Capital One, you have been hacked. blueprint for the course of all men and nations are being revealed in our time by prophet Elvis Mbonyi, God's chosen prophetic portal of this age through whom the secrets of the nations and rulers are laid bare for all to see. Which flag should I first deal with? Let me first do Kenya here. Seventh January, two thousand twenty. Kenya, the beloved of the Lord, I see old blocks shaking and crumbling in Kenya. Old blocks shaking and crumbling. And the Spirit of God says, there shall be a new face begin to spring up to bring new wine and the old structures shall begin to give way to this because there shall come a force that no man and no establishment can put out for I do a new thing. And the Spirit of God says, these are the signs that you shall see in that nation. I shall begin to cause a division. I shall begin to cause a strife. And they shall come out news of disowning, disowning. And many leaders disowning, being disowned disowning and being disowned and you shall hear you shall hear places that were strongholds of certain known leaders disowning and they shall parade and they say we disown we disown for us we are going this way now i'm telling you things that you're going to see it's not there it is there and uh And the Spirit of God says, when you shall see, I'm talking Kenya now, the time 
when it seems like they have progressed and progressed and planned and have said we are surely taking this angle and they have planned everything and then the riots shall come now here we need to pray Father Kava Kenya in the name of Jesus I cover the nation of Kenya we are there by the power of prophecy and I declare peace over the land that what you do Lord may it come out as peaceful as it gets in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus a week later signs of an escalated and very public fallout between Kenya's president Uhuru Kenyatta and his deputy president William Ruto once close allies dominated the media and remained a major national and international news item throughout the year as a result of the rapid deterioration in their political alliance this fallout would lead to the major factions and their leaders in Kenya publicly disowning each other after years of trying to conceal the cracks in their political union, just as the prophecy had specified. Uru Kenyatta appears to cobble together a new coalition and wield a big stick at the same time against his, can we call it, former ally? Well, it's testing times here for the deputy president who has staked his future on what he fashions as a race between, quote, hustlers, a term he coined for his 2022 political mission, and dynasties, in reference to forces revolving around President Kenyatta and ODM leader Raila Odinga. So, what are the options for William Ruto? Our very own Enoch Sokolia gives it a try. Before things fell apart, Deep Ruto was the heir apparent to President Kenyatta as the leader of the Jubilee Party. As the co-driver of the country's ruling party, it was almost a sure bet that he would replace Uhuru once he vacates. But the current rift between the two has widened to such an extent that jumping into Jubilee's top seat looks like a daunting task for Ruto. His influence in the party he helped to build has been cut significantly. His key allies have been chopped off from government or rendered powerless. Meanwhile, the Jubilee administration has seemed to frustrate and isolate its second in command, Deputy President William Ruto, in a government that he heavily campaigned for, with President Ruto Kenyatta having long ceased delegating in national duties to his principal assistant. ATN News understand that the once dynamic duo now hardly speak. Asian senior political reporter Chris Sider has been doing some digging and reports that the Ruto political axis seems unperturbed and ready to face anyone. It appears to be a stumbling block to the DP's presidential ambitions. There is a plot apparently to impeach the deputy president. Members of parliament are like to President Uru Kenyatta and ODM leader Raila Odinga, daring deputy president William Ruto to resign for what they term as reprehensible, reprehensible conduct. MPs accuse Ruto of gross misconduct and violation of oath of office saying his 2022 presidential ambitions have distracted him from his role as deputy president. Remarks were taken very lightly by pro-Ruto members of parliament when no a quick rejoined to express confidence in their numbers in parliament, daring their counterparts to bring it off. In a country with a history of violent polarization, the fallout between the president and his deputy president concerning to the nation as it was did not lead to widespread civil unrest a testament to the peaceful preservation the prophet spoke and prayed over the nation the prophecy is still unfolding these and countless other prophetic fulfillments have more than shown that the prosperity and preservation of nations is sealed in the word of God's foremost prophet of our generation, more than worthy of double honor, Prophet Elvis Mboni. Yes, when we tell you that the future is brought now to now, that's what Prophet Elvis Mwanya does. He makes us understand and know the times and seasons and that God is still mindful of everything that happens in his people's lives. Now, ladies and gentlemen, at this very moment, we're going to get ready to give to Prophet Elvis Mwanya. All right. The scripture says in the book of Genesis 15 verses 1, 
that Abraham had a vision from the Lord and the Lord showed him his greatness. Let me give it, get to me in the NLT version. He says that Abraham had this vision and the Lord told him that he will guard him and he will have a great reward. Now tonight you're going to prepare your prophetic and your general offering in light with this journey that we're going to walk together. He says, as you give, there must be a reward in mind. That's what the Lord reveals. That's the vision that he gives you. That there must be a reward as you give. Then he says in verses 5, that after all these things had actually happened, Abraham, the Lord told Abraham to step out. He gave him a vision, told him, step out and you see the stars. And you see how many descendants you will have. So right now, as you're taking a hold of your offering, I want you to begin seeing the reward. The reward for Abraham was the descendants. The multiplication. Your reward tonight as you give is the multiplication of your resources. Your descendants, what proceeds out of your sacrifice. So he says, there were many descendants. You begin meditatively envisioning. So you take a hold of your offering. And as you give it, you begin to see the descendants. You begin to see what proceeds. The cars, the houses everything material don't be afraid don't be intimidated by any weird speech that causes to think that prosperity is not of god now a time came after he had given now notice after he had given actually verse 6 says because abraham believed this instruction from the lord it was counted unto him righteousness now he believed the lord do you believe the one who has been sent by the lord to you today Amen. Prophet Elvis Simone, as long as you believe the prophet, yes. it will be counted unto you financial increase. It will be counted unto you dominion as long as you believe. Now what happens after Abraham, after he gives, I think it must be in verses 9 or somewhere about, after he gives, his vision is shaken. So he asks the Lord, will I really be able to get all these possessions that you've given me? He begins to ask him, and then you should see, verses 9, what the Lord tells him. This was the solution for stabilizing the vision that the Lord had given him about the reward. He tells him, get an offering. That was, the, that was the solution. The solution to stabilizing your vision towards the reward that the Lord has given you is actually, that's why he tells him, bring me a three-year-old heifer, female goat, ram, turtle dove, young pigeon. Thank God we need to bring turtle doves and pigeons and everything. The blood of Jesus has sorted dust out and all you need to do is to demonstrate by your prophetic offering and your general offering tonight so after he does all these things you come to realize that in verses 11 there were some animals that tried to come vultures which tried to come and snatch the testimony he had received from his giving and please pay your attention here because i want you to consolidate everything we are getting from our offering today so after abraham gives there are some vultures. There are some circumstances, situations which try to come around and snatch his offering and snatch the testimony of his offering. Because remember, the testimony of his offering lay in his sacrifice, that his prophetic and general offering. What did Abraham do? Abraham chased them away. He refused any contradictory thoughts that came to try to steal the testimony of his sacrifice. And that's what you're going to do tonight. I want you to stand he says in the book of Ephesians 6 verses 13 and verses 14 that having done all, stand. Having done all, having offered your sacrifice, having offered everything, stand. Be firm, focus, be steadfast on the reward which is coming to you. And that is what, that's the secret that Abraham used to actually turn out to be the father of faith. His vision remained steadfast. So there was a vision. There was an offering. There was a determination in his heart. To remain steadfast. It is going to take a discipline for you. After you have given. To refuse any contradiction. You don't walk by. They just don't walk by sight. They walk by faith. Refuse any physical contradiction that comes. After you have given. Remain steadfast in the testimony. That all is working for good. All is working well for you. Because you are an overcomer. So right now take your offering. Right now. Right now. What do you see? Because it's all about what you see. Abraham saw descendants. He focused on the vision of the Lord. What do you see? Do you see your multiplication? Do you see your increase? Do you see your dominion? And remain only on that. Glory to God. Amen. Hallelujah. Great I 
Now, because you've understood that Prophet Elvis Mbunye is no ordinary prophet, but an extraordinary prophet sent to us by God, you have set yourself up for blessings upon blessings from glory to glory, ladies and gentlemen. So on that very note, you realize that even the testimonies that come from those that have listened and heed to the words of the prophet are extraordinary, are those that walk in signs, miracles, and wonders. Now, as you're about to watch, you realize that this is the testimony of someone who has taken in everything and into account what Prophet Elvis Mbonye has said. Don't forget to always send your testimony at testimony at, to, at prophetelvis.com. Again, the scripture says in the book of Psalm 68, verses 1, that let God arise and let all his enemies scatter. You, by the word of your testimony that you share, you're demonstrating that God is arising Amen. in your life. And because you're letting God arise by sharing your testimony, by testifying of the goodness of the Lord this year, the year of the overcomer, you're letting your enemies scatter. So what's the secret of letting your enemies scatter? Magnify the Lord, let him arise by sharing your testimony. Mind-blowing encounters. Extraordinary personal testimonies. Unfolding before masses. As lives and destinies are completely realigned. Upon encountering the true spirit of prophecy. My mom has been sick for some time. Last year, three different physicians confirmed that her right kidneys had problems. They were sick, so they were not functioning well. The left one, though, was working, but the right one had problems. And my mom had complained of pain in her loins for some months. So this pain eventually started going low to her low abdomen. Uh, in December last year, towards Christmas, again took her to another doctor who confirmed that her kidneys were sick and he told me he's giving us treatment for only two months. After the two months, if there is no much improvement, then other decisions will be taken. On Monday of this week, my mom calls me and tells me her condition has worsened. She has too much pain in her loins and the low abdomen and she's all swollen. So me, being a medical person, I knew that was now sign of the kidneys failing. So I told her first to go to the nearby hospital, she went. Then the following day, which was Tuesday, 9th of February, she called me saying that please send me money because they have referred me to the district referral hospital. Though I had some bit of pain, hearing that news but at the same time I felt happy because it was a Tuesday and this is the day I know I'm going to meet Prophet Elvis Bonye in fellowship. 
So I sent for her the money. I also gave some offering and I told the God of Prophet Elvis Mbonye, I said, God of Prophet Elvis Mbonye, I want a new kidney for my mother. So I continued praying for my mother the whole day, but I knew the climax would be that Tuesday evening. Then when it came to fellowship time in the evening, when Prophet entered, he started by praying to some lady. She said, there is a lady I'm seeing. You have your sister who is sick. She has some mental problem. She's in the bedroom. You run, run quickly and touch her head, but don't wake her up. So for me, when Prophet went to that, I knew that was the time he was releasing healing. So I started straight away mentioning my mother's name. As Prophet was on the other lady, for me I was mentioning my mother's name because that was the only thing in my mind that day. I knew I'm supposed to get my mother's healing that day. So Prophet continued releasing healing for the lady. Meanwhile, for me, I was connecting for my own mother for her kidneys. After the fellowship, me, I started thanking God. I said, God, I'm thanking you for the new kidney you have given to my mother. Then the following day, my mother was taken to the district referral hospital. And for me, I continued thanking God. And the, as I wait for results coming from that hospital, so by evening time on Wednesday is when my brother in the village called me. And immediately when he called me, for him he started by telling me, Mom is back home. But me, my, all my thoughts were only on the result. I told him, what have they told you? Why is she already home? He said, told me that, yes, they have told us. According to the, the results, he, he even had the paper because he was reading directly from what was written. He said, according to this paper they have given us, they are saying both mommy's kidneys are normal and functioning well. Then from there, I shouted. I started praising God, shouting, rejoicing. Then my brother said, but... I'm also not understanding this thing. How do they say today that mommy's kidneys are okay? And yet all along, not one doctor, all the doctors have been telling us the kidney is sick. Then I told my brother, the truth is, mommy's kidneys were sick. I also knew they were sick. But because since yesterday, I prayed to the God of Prophet Elvis Moni and I told him, I want a new kidney for my mother. So if they are telling you there is nothing seen, in the kidney, they are all functioning well. That was the new kidney, which was given to my mom by the God of Prophet Elvis Boy. That's why I'm rejoicing. So my brother said, ah, you may be right, because I can't believe that all these doctors saw it and today it was not seen. I said, yes, it is not a coincidence, it happened. I'm so happy, my mother is fine. She right now, of course, the swelling goes slowly. But all the pains she had have gone. She has no pain in her low abdomen. She has no pain in her loins. Myself, I'm a scientist, and the, scientifically, I can't give you an explanation. The only explanation I know is right now, somebody who is now on the, her bed, she can get up and even cook her own food. She is fine, and I give all the glory to God the God of Prophet Elvis Boni, who has given my mother a new kidney. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and the word of their testimony. Do not let your destiny hang in the balance. Share your testimonies at testimony at prophetelvis.com. of Jesus. Just love on him and bask in his presence. He is here, he is here right now. Come on, just bask in it. Love on him and magnify the Lord Jesus. Love on him. Jesus, I love you. 
your name on high. You are worthy of all praise, worthy of all glory. You are worthy of all power and all The anointing of the Holy Ghost is working on you now. Anyone with chronic back aches, right now in the name of Jesus. Be healed in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, it's done. Just shake yourself. Take in that anointing. Be reconstructed now in the name of Jesus. Miracles are happening. There's another lady. You knocked yourself. You fell off ladders. Then you thought it was simple, but somehow you fractured your knees. And areas of your life that have become now complicated as a result of falling off ladders in the name of Jesus receive the unction of the Holy Ghost right now that makes you whole that makes you complete in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I am the Lord, says the Spirit of the living God. Amen. That stands in your midst. Amen. That watches over you. Amen. That cares for you. Amen. And watches wherever you go. Amen. I see you coming in and I see you going out. Amen. I am with you and I will never leave you nor forsake you. Amen. I have blessed my assurance upon your life that nothing nothing that concerns you 
shall be touched. Amen. Because I have preserved you. Amen. I have watched over you. Amen. And I declare over you that you shall see my goodness. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory Amen. to God. Therefore now, says the Spirit of the living God, look up to me. Do not look on your sides. Do not look on that which happens to you. But look up to me. For I create a way in the wilderness. And the workings of my spirit that shall manifest. And they begin now, says the spirit. The men around you, the women around you, shall testify of my goodness. And you shall know that I am he that has been with you throughout the night and have brought you through into the day. Amen. That you may walk with me and that you may not stumble. Amen. You shall not stumble, says the Spirit of the living God. Amen. Brida bakere mon de rembra Che la broke le mon de rembra si la manda remo Rivers of restoration Brasi le mon de rembra si la man Rike le mon de rembra si la man Just partake of restoration Rise for it, I am on the embrace. I am on the remonde rema. Brasile monde rema. I see the Lord reconstructing broken hearts. Brasile monde rema, broken promises. The action of the Holy Ghost that is here not only to mend broken hearts, but to reconstruct. The perfectness Amen. of that which you desired in your life Amen. and was going haywire in the name of Jesus. Amen. May you receive it right now Amen. as you ponder upon that anointing that reconstructs Amen. that part of your life as you indeed intended it to be. In the name of Jesus. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Someone you are supposed to travel this Thursday, this Thursday, you are supposed to travel. But then you're thinking if you travel this Thursday, that there's something that you're going to miss around on Saturday. And you're wondering, should I travel and then I miss this one? Or should I remain? Which one is bigger? Which one is more significant? And I'm saying to a lady, I know who I'm talking to you now. Eh? In the name of Jesus, you have to understand one thing. That your destiny is in your hands. You have to understand that these two things here do not determine the significance of your life. The Spirit of God is telling you eh? that whether you take one thing or the other, the other will realign itself back to you. Amen. Now, it is simpler for you to go because you will miss this one and to not come back. The one of Saturday, I don't want to air them out. Eh? The one of Saturday may be destabilized and will come back much later. So you go and the hand of God will be on you Amen. and you will see it Amen. actually to help you. I have postponed it in the name of Jesus. That Saturday thing. In the name of Jesus, Amen. may you receive the answer before Thursday Amen. that you may know that the hand of God is supreme. Amen. In the name of Jesus, Amen. just partake of the prophetic anointing right now. Rida boko de mandira mro sele mundere mbra silama Rida bra salama do re de kerema Riba salama the miracles taking place everywhere yeah. miracles miracles Allow this glory to lift you up 
Haleluya. Haleluya. Rike Yamosila Mande Meserema. Your atmosphere is changing. Rika Ramosila Mande Remresila Manda Mosila Haleluya. Haleluya. You know, if you want to understand how the Lord works, you need to understand that the Lord, the Lord is not affected by your present. Eh? The Lord is there in your present. He's not affected by it. He says he declares the end from the beginning. Eh? He declares the end from the beginning. Amen. Hallelujah. In other words, he's already in your end. Eh? And because he's already there, you know, for you, you're stuck here and you're wondering, you know, you, you see this, this is where I am. Eh? <laughs> and he says, no, 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 you're actually there. Amen. You know, he declares the end from the beginning. Now, stop stationing yourself where you are right now. Don't station yourself there. That is not your reality. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. A lot of people just station themselves at a place where, you know, things are small, things are insignificant, you know, and where they are placed, they are looking towards, you know, something happening to take them somewhere. And they don't realize that the Spirit of God he says, he declares your end from the beginning. Now, one of the things that you have to understand and you have to lay a hold of eh, is to learn how to station yourself in the beginning in all things. I mean at the end, in all things. Place yourself at the end of the matter. At the end of the matter. Place yourself at the end of all things and at and as far as God is concerned, there is no end of yours that is not great, that is not glorious. So you place yourself there. Don't station at, you know, he says he declares the end from the beginning. Start from the end and then you let it play out. <laughs> Hallelujah. I said start from the end. Eh? You see, and this is something that people really take lightly. They don't they don't capture. They take it so lightly and they don't allow it to be the determining factor or the driving factor of their lives. So they, they don't understand how to win a battle before the battle is won. Eh? They don't know how to conquer before they conquer. They don't know how to let me say something that some of you are used to. Eh? To court before they court. Eh? <laughs> Hallelujah. Because many of you are not used to battles. Eh? <laughs> You're used to Valentine's Day. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Let me tell you. A lot of these things, you do them before you do them. You, you, you do them on the inside of you and let the outside catch up with what has already happened on the inside. Eh? Do you understand what I'm saying? Let your outside experience catch up with what is already true, what is already determined, where you already are. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, I would tell you about a number of witnesses who, of course, <laughs> when we started operating, uh, in the realm of the spirit, there are things which, of course, I can't mention to you because you say, oh, for you, you know how to capture those things. Eh? Uh, but you know, the principle is the same. Eh? When the spirit of God was showing me the path I would take, and he showed me certain people that in the beginning of it would uh, come along, eh? I got their numbers, and I have witnesses to this, eh? So when they would call, I would be waiting for their calls. Eh? <laughs> I say, oh, okay, now this one, so that this is, uh, now this one like that, that's how it happened. Eh? Because I was, I was already there, so the outside was, already, was now catching up 
with what was already true on the inside. And you don't know how immensely powerful this is. Eh? The outside is not anywhere near, anywhere near as influential as what you have on the inside of you. That end, I'm telling you, the most influential bit of your life is the thing that is happening on the inside. And then people chill here and then they, they wait. They don't realize that you have to go there before you go there. Hallelujah. I remember walking around. I remember after the Lord had told me to write uh, uh, Testing the Powers of Age to Come. I remember I went. I wanted it in a certain bookshop. Eh? Now here is something which at least it's within your grasp. Eh? So I, I remember going. after write, When I was writing it, by the way, I didn't have a coin. Eh? <laughs> so I went. I walked somewhere on a certain bookshop where I wanted it and I saw it there. I saw the banner, a certain banner that I wanted it to, I wanted certain writings on it there. And everything was done as far as I was concerned. Eh? As far as I was concerned, now let it play out. Eh? Yeah. As, as captured. Eh? You know, he declares the end. Eh? You have to operate like this. Eh? You go to the end and then work out things from that end. Eh? Towards the end. Eh? <laughs> From the beginning, begin with the end. Don't begin with the beginning. Eh? You understand what I'm saying? Eh? Now, this is extremely important. Extremely important. Your outward experiences will begin to catch up with that which is already set, which is already declared. You know where you are in the end. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's why Job said, though your beginning be insignificant, your end shall greatly increase. Job 8, 7. You know what is, he says, though your beginning be insignificant. Now that's the principle. It says, your end shall greatly increase. Greatly increase. So, you know, these things where you, you feel as if your beginning is insignificant, it is small. Why are you there? Don't leap from there. Start going somewhere. Go and go and go and go and go. And here I'm now talking about on the inside of you. Eh? Go until you arrive to, on a place. You know, one of the reasons why when people, you know these things of what? Of, of breakthrough, breakthrough, breakthrough. <laughs> they are good. Eh? But the reason as to why you find so many people uncomfortable with the blessing that has instantly come upon them, it is because they have not gone there on the inside of them. So they don't feel like they fit there. But you know, when you go there on the inside and these things come out and play out, you know this is what, this fits you, this suits you. You understand what I'm talking about? You know, there are guys who you find eh, the way they behave after they have some level of finances. Eh? <laughs> and you just know this is these things of what those, those things, eh? <laughs> you know, it found you not yet there. And so when you got it, you can't believe that you actually have it. Hallelujah. So, you know, when you get to a place that you are comfortable with, it is because you had prepared yourself on the inside. You knew this was, you were already in that end. So when you are there, you are comfortable. It, it doesn't look like, you know, People you see and say, doesn't deserve that. <laughs> you see? Eh? Like they don't feed. They don't really feed. Eh? Hallelujah. Now I do not see any remnant of God like that. Eh? Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Glory yeah. to God. So now this is a thing that so many people like are not so much conversant with it. Eh? Hallelujah. Amen. So when a time comes, and then all of a sudden, you are into the thick of things now, eh? will you be so blown up by what is happening and you lose your mind over it? You know, you, 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 you are sound. You remain, you, you, you remain, you don't sound after all these things happen because you know they were supposed to happen anyway. They are yours. You know? You're not like a thief. Eh? <laughs> they are yours. Eh? 
And so now your judgments still remain as they ought to be. They still remain sound. Everything you see it. But when you see people so messed up by some of these things, the Bible says prosperity destroys a fool. Eh? It's because they found them foolish. Eh? Hallelujah. Amen. So you see, eh? when people don't set themselves towards the end of things and things happen to them, they are not prepared for those things. Eh? And now, one of the most dangerous things is when you are in a place like this, you are in an atmosphere where you are very much likely to receive those instant blessings. Now, it's very dangerous <laughs> because we might lose you in two weeks. Because, you know, these things here, some, for some reason, they do not always follow a train. Now, the perfect will of God is for you to capture it that way such that you may be mature and sound when you have it. You may have something that will last, you know, for all eternity and it's yours. Eh? But now the, the danger of it is when the anointing is like the way it is right now eh? and it is working, it can just, you can just capture it just like that. Then the next day, you know, you're taking on another level. Eh? And for some people, it's really worrying that it happens that way. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. So, you see, eh? it says, though your beginning be small, yet your latter end shall be greatly, greatly, greatly. Not just increased, greatly increased. Now, that's the principle of the anointing. That the end of all things, as far as God is concerned, as far as your life is concerned in the eyes of God, at the end of the matter, whether you had like a small capital, it will be big. Amen. If you had like a small house, it will be big. Amen. Everything greatly increases Amen. in the realm of God. Eh? You know, there's no depreciation in the realm of God. Eh? Everything appreciates, appreciates, appreciates. And that is how you're supposed to... Now you go to the end of it and see yourself better. Your health has to appreciate eh? everything about you. Now for you musicians, your voices are appreciated. <laughs> You know, everything, everything is just like that. Eh? Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. And we want our musicians yeah. not to just be here playing fellowship things. Eh? Yeah. You're going to rock the world. Eh? Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. You know, there's nothing about this whole, the remnant thing that is supposed to remain in house. Eh? That is not our principle. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Everyone here shall be a city that is set on a hill that cannot be hidden in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. So that is the principle. You've got to be up there, out there, shiny. Hallelujah. Your latter end shall greatly increase. Ecclesiastes 3.11 says, better is the end of the matter. It says, he, no, it says he has made everything beautiful in his time. Also, he has set eternity in the heart so that, the, that no man can find out the working that God maketh from the beginning to the end. But he has set it in the heart of man. You understand what he's saying here? He says that that's where it is. Eternity, that timelessness, it's in the heart of man. Now when you're there, you are at the end of, of things. Now if when, you, when you're here in the beginning, you're playing out time. Eh? And when you're playing out time, you're seeing tomorrow where something's still small. You say, where, how am I going to work out this? And when you're in that consciousness, then it distracts you. The consciousness of time is the greatest distractor. I'm telling you, it distracts you if you live like that, and you're conscious of, okay, it even distracts, let me tell you, even especially the prophetic, because the prophetic is spiritual. When I stand here and I start thinking about your curfew, <laughs> you, because the prophetic realm is the eternal realm. Eh? So, because it's in the eternal realm, imagine me being conscious of time and yet wanting to prophesy. You can't prophesy in time. You can't prophesy in, in, in space. Eh? You've got to get out there those snippets of the prophecies that you see are actually experiences or encounters out of time and space. There's no way you can, you can capture the prophetic in time. So 
You see, eh? now this whole time becomes a distraction. And the only thing is, we are working something around it. Because you see, eh? you can't prophesy being conscious of time. Now, I would have given you some sneak peek of what we are working on. But the problem with you, you guys just are so noisy. Eh? You reveal the plan. <laughs> you know, eh? you reveal the plan on social media. And then these guys come and... I don't want to catch them by surprise. Eh? But they are watching. <laughs> you see? Eh? But we have to get to the place where we are speaking, we are prophesying in an interaction where we are not conscious at all of time. Eh? And we are getting there. It is not fast, so don't worry. Eh? Want them to wake up. Eh! Then they try to tie this nothing. They try nothing, you know. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory to God. So now the thing is, the thing is, you don't have to be conscious of time. Don't be cautious of time. Stand at the end of... You know there are certain people who stationed, even in the scriptures, they stationed somewhere and that was it. And time ceased. You want, you, you, what do you think happened to people like the Abrahams, the Sarahs? They stationed in their youthful age and that was it. Amen. To them, they were not, you know, there are, there, are things that, there, are, there are things that happen in the world and are justified in our conversations, but actually they are carnal and worldly. You know, people talk about midlife crisis eh? because someone apparently wants to remain young eh? and they speak about it in a sense that is derogatory. But they want people to act old. <laughs> Keep on acting old. Eh? We shall see you. You know, No, not we shall, we, no wonder we see you. Eh? You see? Eh? Hallelujah! You know, some of the things, many of the things, most of the things that are accepted by the principle and workings of the world are actually working against us. And people never realize it. They never check up themselves and wonder, what have I taken up? Eh? Like, where am I? Eh? So now, the thing is, people station themselves somewhere and that is it. There's an encounter that I had, and I saw a man, I told some people, I think it was last year or the year before, I saw a man who I greatly admire. <laughs> I met him somewhere. He's with the Lord, eh? <laughs> and he was with the Lord even then. Eh? But the, what was so strange is this man died over 85 years of, he was over about 85 years. And this man was youthful when I met him. And I saw this man. <laughs> anyway, we shall. And, uh, okay, we, let's not go there. It's very controversial. Eh? Hallelujah. This is how you influence whatever is happening on the outside. Station yourself at the end where things have greatly increased. Things are more beautiful. You are more beautiful. Things are more glorious. Everything. Just get yourself there and let all these things outside now start catching up to that. You understand what I'm talking about? Eh? That is it. That is exactly it. Have that vision. Of who you are, where you are, everything. Just remain there. Remain there. Don't allow anything to shake you, swing you here and there. There's a world voices that we intend, that we are reconstructing. We have stationed ourselves somewhere in a world where people no longer have nappies on their faces. You know? You see, we have gone to a place and we are not going to allow things on the outside to distract you. David, King David, before he was king, Goliath tried to intimidate him. And then David said, no, 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 no. For me, I see something different. Eh? I see your head chopped off, being fed to the birds of the air. And he maintained that and he knocked off the guy. Almost said the Chigai. <laughs> Hallelujah. We know what we are doing. We know exactly what we are doing. Hallelujah. And I know for a fact that there is no remnant of God that captures this revelation. I'm telling you, it's a matter of time where this testimony is going to turn the world around. 
First go to Acts 27 from verse 10. Eh? This is uh, Paul when he was uh, on his way in a ship. Eh? And he said to them, this is, uh, and Paul said to them, Sirs, I perceive that this voyage, now you see, I perceive he had something on inside of him. Eh? While he was in a ship, he was somewhere, and he said, I perceive. There's something on inside of him that gave him a perception. Eh? We call it extrasensory perception. Eh? Because it's not of the senses. But why do you call it extra? Because it's extra. Eh? It's not of the five senses. Eh? I perceive that this voyage will be with heart and much damage. Not only of the lading and ship, but also of our life. Now here is someone in a certain situation. Then he captures some future about where they are headed eh? by a perception that is not rational. It is not scientific, but is in a certain scenario. And then he starts picking up on something and saying, this may not go well with us. Eh? <laughs> Verse 11. Eh? Nevertheless, the centurion believed the master and owner of the ship. More than those things which were spoken by Paul. Now, here is the situation he's saying, eh? he's a master of the ship. He is an expert. This guy knows what the whole ship thing is all about. Eh? Who you're saying, I perceive things, I perceive. Where? From where? That's how we told guys years ago about the choppers and they're saying, you know, because they're saying, you know, shall we change things just because of a prophecy? You're saying you perceive. But now this is saying everything is clear. How are you saying you perceive? I want you to understand our realm. Eh? And you, I want you to start engaging it and working around it. And that's how we rescue the world. Eh? Now, he said here, you see, one of the ship says all is well. So, who are you, Paul? First of all, you're on this boat as a prisoner. So, anyway. <laughs> and I'll go for verse 20. Go to verse 20. Verse 20. Go to verse 20. Verse 20. Go to verse 20. <clears throat> And when, this is now, things now started going as Paul had perceived, eh? things were damaged and you know this whole thing. Eh? And when neither sun nor stars in many days appeared and no small tempest lay on us, all hope that we should be saved was then taken away. But after long abstinence, you now these guys are already in trouble after, you know, uh, defying or neglecting what the man of God had said. Eh? After long abstinence, not the absence which you guys know, eh? <laughs> Paul stood eh? <laughs> forth in the midst of them eh? and said, Sirs, you know, you should have hearkened unto me. And not have lost from credit, and to have gained the harm, this harm and loss. Now, verse 22. And now I exhort you. Okay, now they're already in trouble and everything, but now he's exhorting them eh, to be of good cheer. You see, in all these things, eh, there's always a power that worketh something good. Eh, and never be in a scenario and you think, okay, now we have no. You blown it. No, 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 no. Something good turns around. Somehow there's this goodness and mercy that follows you everywhere, even when you make a mistake. Eh? He says, and now I exhort you to be of good cheer, for there shall no there shall be no loss of any man's life among you, but of the sheep. Eh? For there stood by me this night. The angel of God. Now when you speak like that, people begin wondering, like, what are you talking about? Eh? Whose I am and whom I serve. Saying, fear not. <laughs> Paul, eh? you must be brought before Caesar. Now that was the end of the matter. Eh? The end of the matter is, Paul must be brought before Caesar. There's no drowning of the sea, of the ship. 
that can affect that, that can mess that up. Do you understand this? Eh? There's a sure end where you must reach. Now, even if it means that, let's say, the whole ship drowns, somehow you, we don't know, but you'll have, you'll have to appear before Caesar. Yes. Now, there are things which are very certain. Things which are very, very certain that you have to increase greatly. That one, it is certain. There's no way you can remain in a place where you have not seen that bit of you. Multiply and multiply and multiply and shine on top. It's, there's no way that can happen. First of all, you know why? Because you are following my pattern. Yeah. Hallelujah! Yeah. There's no way you can follow my pattern. And somehow you end up in the middle. And I'm, I know what I'm talking about here. This power is working for you, in you, around you. I'm telling you, there is no way. No way. It doesn't. It just, it, it just can't happen. It just can't happen. I'm telling you, from where I came from, how I came from there, how I walked, how I am talking about, I know what I'm talking about. And I know that this same power is working for you wherever you are. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. It is working for you. Everything pertaining to your life, pertaining to your destiny, pertaining to your godliness, it is working, it's working it out. Amen. And there's no way it can remain. I know this power. There's no way it can leave you. Just It can't. It just can't. And there's no way man or other factors can quash it. There's no, there's absolutely no way. And there's no way it can somehow leave you in the middle where you have somehow achieved, but not, not gotten to the... It, it, it can't be. It can't be. Until you're on the top of all things, in your line, in your field, on the throne, it's, it is still working. You can be assured of that. You must see that end. I know what I'm talking about. You must see that end. So this angel said, fear not, Paul. You must be brought before Caesar. Not you should, you must. And lo, God has given all them that sail with you. Amen. Now that settles it. Eh? Can you imagine? It says all of them, not some of them. All of them. All of them. You understand what I'm talking about? Eh? He says, all of them, and that is irrespective of anything, all of them that sail with you, he has given the same end. You know the reason as to why I always tell you to try and, try and, try and look into my life from the beginning. Eh? Just try and look at it. Because you will see this mystery that works and you will know that you're sailing as long, as well, as well eh? with this mystery. Because you're connected with it. You're in partnership with it. You're actually one with it. And that's your end. Your end is now definite already. You know it. You know when God raises up people like us, it is to confirm to you your end. Eh? And I don't want you to ever detach yourself from this. I don't want you to ever detach because I'm telling you that the mystery of this power is more real than anything I have encountered from childhood to where I am now. I'm I know exactly what I'm talking about. It is so real, more real than any physical factor. I know exactly what I'm talking about. And once it bears you and you bear it, that's it. You sail along with it, it takes you, it takes you, it takes you, and that's it. No devil, no man can influence it. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Fear not, sirs. Be of good cheer. Now, this after he has, you know, received the revelation again. Eh? For I believe God that it shall be even as it was told me by the angel. Hallelujah. Yeah. Go to verse 30. Go to verse 30. Verse 30. And as the shipmen were about to flee out of the ship, now this is after the whole chaos, eh? when they had let down the boat into the sea under color, as though they would have cast anchors out of the foreship, Paul said to the centurion 
unto the soldiers, except these abide in the sheep, you cannot be saved. That's why I'm, I want you to abide in that pattern, in that he says, you cannot be saved. Except you abide, you say you cannot be saved. Eh? Then the soldiers cut off the ropes of the boat and let her, now, now at least they were listening, <laughs> and let her fall off. And while the day was coming on, Paul besought them all to take meat, saying, this day it's the 14th day, you guys, eh? that you have tarried and continued with fasting, having taken nothing. <laughs> Wherefore, I pray you to take some meat. Eh? <laughs> now, another pastor would have said, Fast, fall! <laughs> <laughs> Because now to them, just torturing yourself, that's when God will listen. Nah. You know? <laughs> but now here he's telling them, you guys eat. Eh? Eat, be of good cheer, be of good. You know, when you are assured of something, you, you just sit down with coffee and just take and, and watch a football match. Eh? <laughs> anyway, wherefore I pray you to take some meat. For this is for your health. Eh? Even didn't say this is for your spiritual condition. Eh? <laughs> for this is for your health. Eh? For there shall not an heir, an heir, fall from the head of any of you. You understand what this is? Nothing shall affect you. For there shall not an heir fall from the head of any of you. Mark the words, any. And when he had thus spoken... He took bread and gave thanks to God in the presence of them all. And when he had broken it, he began to... So let me show you how to eat this thing. Eh? He began to eat. Eh? Verse 36. Then were they all of good. She said, ah, man. Eh? They were happy. Eh? And they also took some and ate this. Eat, 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 eat. <laughs> Hallelujah. Now I'm telling you. I'm telling you. That this is when you can, this is when you tell eh, that you have messed up the devil. When you're eating, muchomo here, chewing, having fun, he doesn't want that. He wants you to be, he, he, he's free, he's free, he's, that's where he wants you. <laughs> I've told you many times when he has come to me, several times. One time he came to me and he started throwing clothes at me. <laughs> and then I what? See, you know, I woke up. So I looked, I wondered, the clothes falling on me. <laughs> so I said, what's up with this guy? So I said, let me wait and see. And I saw again, they were coming out from the wardrobes on the, on the wall. Eh? I said, Phew. So now what's wrong with this guy here? Ah, just said it to sleep. Because eh? <laughs> you know, eh? I knew now this guy, he wants you to send a prayer. I said, oh, no, I, will not, I will not do that. Eh? <laughs> you will not put me, I'm, I'm first of all feeling sleepy, you know. <laughs> you know? Say, now those are yours, eh? you know. <laughs> But anyway, time has gone. Let's pray in the Holy Ghost. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. <laughs> I'm releasing spiritual blessings upon you. Mysterious blessings. There's a lady you got an accident. You got an accident this past week. In the car you are seated behind. And though it is not so serious, it really shook you. It really shook you and the spirit of fear has been infused in your heart and you feel like your life somehow can be taken away anytime. Now that's the devil who's scaring you for nothing. Eh? I just want to command the spirit of fear to be removed out of you and out of anyone. The spirit of death and fear. I command you in the name of Jesus. Rika Yamosilama. 
be departed in the name of Jesus. Depart in the name of Jesus. I see something in this nation that I'm not going to reveal, but I'm going to ask you to pray about it. Eh? In the name of Jesus, we are the hope and the light of the world and particularly of this nation. We shine in times of darkness and the light that we shine covers this nation and it overpowers the darkness. For Father, we thank you because you turn Morning into joy and the spirit of heaviness into a spirit of praise Amen. in the name of Jesus. Amen. We release the light of God, the peace of God Amen. in the name of Jesus to cover this nation. Amen. The peace of God, the light of God, Amen. the joy of God Amen. to cover this nation in the name of Jesus. And I see angels taking charge now in the name of Jesus. Because of time, just agree with me any special thing, any special thing that you have in your heart. In the name of Jesus, may this miracle working power of the Most High, you're capturing it right now in your hands. It is working for you. That miracle. In the name of Jesus, receive its manifestation, miracle manifestation. It is done in the name of Jesus. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Come on, celebrate the prophet. Come on, magnify the Lord for his goodness and his mercies and you forever. Glory to Jesus. You know, tomorrow about this time will surely be in a better place. Now, it all makes sense when the prophet tells us that we are somewhere in the future and we look much, 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 much more Amen. better than we are right now. And because of that, I want you to demonstrate your faith by taking your prophetic and your general offering right now and you bring it before the feet of the prophet in celebration and cheerfully perceiving and knowing that all is well for you. Your hiding place, O oh Lord, is the safest place to be. O oh Lord, I love to be in your presence. Your hiding place, O oh Lord, is the safest place to be. O oh Lord, I love to be. Imaginations are no longer a theory, but an actual reality being made.
made manifest through the divine pattern of God upon Prophet Elvis Mboni, who is uniform and corporate setting up the children of God for a glorious victory over the nations. This is the year of the overcomers. <laughs> Hallelujah! The year of the overcomers. <laughs> Hallelujah! Join the heirs of gold for a special partnership meeting Saturday, February 20, 2021, 10 a.m. live online at www.prophetelvis.com slash heirs of gold. To become an heir of gold, visit our website at www.prophetelvis.com slash heirs of gold. It's a lifestyle. Indeed, it's a lifestyle, ladies and gentlemen. That was Prophet Elvis Simonia who has left us in a place of blessings and bliss. Now, don't forget to follow him on his social media platforms. It's, if it's your first time to join us while you watch the Zoe Online Fellowship. For all those that have been a part of the journey, well, thank you so much. Keep the comments going. Keep the comments going on all his social media platforms. Show the love. And then don't forget as well to broadcast this beautiful message to the world out there because Prophet Elvis Simonia is what the world needs. Ladies and gentlemen from the team and all of us, have a lovely night and God bless.